I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. In a recent video, we talked about what it's like with uh, trying to understand the context of a different country. And in that, I mentioned some things about cooling houses and why the American approach to air conditioning doesn't necessarily make sense when you're here in Nicaragua. So to that entire theme, I want to take you through a little bit of a real house, a relatively normal house here in Nicaragua. Certainly houses exist of all types, but I want to show you one and give you an idea of what this house is like. And I think once you see it, you'll have a little bit of an idea as to why air conditioning and other cooling technologies are not exactly the same as you may be used to in other areas. So let's get to that bump and get into the house. I try hard in our videos to have really good image quality on everything. Well, one of the things that's gonna happen, you're gonna see this very quickly, is that here in Nicaragua, I talk about this a lot, because people like to stay cool inside, because lifestyles are outside, everything inside a house is ridiculously dark. Unless you're building your own house, assume any house that you're gonna find in Nicaragua, unless it's very specifically built to be for extra to for foreigners, it is going to be dark beyond your wildest imagination. I get it, it's hot, it's bright all the time. People wanna live in caves because it makes them feel cooler, it makes them actually cooler, but it means that filming anything inside a house is all but impossible because it looks awful until you have special studio lights on illuminating everything. Everything is just so dark, so brace yourself for that. I'm sorry that the image quality won't be great, but it's just the reality of being inside houses anywhere in Nicaragua. It's just, it's just how it's going to be. So the first thing to understand is that lifestyles are outside. So I'm walking around the veranda. We have all this furniture outside and we use it constantly, including our dining room table is outside. So if we're going to do anything, we're out in this garden area. We've got hammocks for sleeping in, couches, chairs, dining room tables. We have swing chairs, they're like hammocks, but built as chairs. We have this big egg thing to hang out on. And so this is normal in Nicaragua that whether you have a big garden like us or you're just sitting out on the street, you're going to spend your time outside. Even if you're at home, you're going to spend your time outside of the home. That's how Nicaraguans do things. It's rare to be watching TV. Of course, people do, but it's rare to be spending lots of time watching TV, to spend lots of time holed up in your room. It's just not the lifestyle traditionally because of of working outside and warm temperatures. There was no chance to, you know, 100 years ago, people couldn't cool the houses with air conditioning. So it had to be this way to make things comfortable. So a few things are just historic cultural things that you have to understand to be able to grasp why things are the way that they are. So the first is that lifestyles are outside. And when you are inside, you want everything to be cool and cheap. You don't want to be spending lots of money, especially because traditionally you couldn't. But air conditioning is not necessarily cheap. So people tend to avoid it. And so houses are dark. They don't put energy into lights and things like that because that heats up the house. It's just not what people are looking for. Plus, you're generally in the home to sleep. Or if it's the middle of the day, it's bright enough and you're not worried about it. So uh, you tend to find, I'm going to show this, a lot of really dark walls and very little effort at illumination. And windows tend to be relatively small. But notice the windows. No screens. We have metal bars. Why metal bars? Because we're open all the time. These windows are wide open. We don't close these at night. We don't close these ever. And so if you had screens, well, that doesn't provide any security, and we don't have that many little bugs. There's times that we do, but in general, we don't. So we don't need screens, but we do need security, because otherwise, someone would just hop into the house, it would be wide open, and they might grab a computer or grab uh, money that's laying around the house or just whatever, right? Your TV might walk off. You don't want your house wide open. So there's bars on the windows. That's just a way of handling it. And yes, we have this here, but that's not gonna stop anyone who wants to really get in and there's walls over there. But again, it's all about opportunity here. We have very low violent crime. We're not worried about that kind of stuff, but we are worried about people snatching your TV. So that's why there's bars on the windows. People always mention that. People are obsessed with it being a different form of security than we have in North America. But notice the door is wide open. If you watch my videos and you ever see the door, it's always wide open. There's never a time that that door is closed. Now, when we sleep, we close it. But during the day, this is wide open, as are several other doors in the house. There's just always doors open. So these bars are only there. I'm pointing at the wrong thing. These bars are only there for while we're sleeping. During the day, they literally do nothing. And much of the time, these other gates are open. So while there's walls, 
everything's open most of the time. So uh, it's only at night you want the ability to lock up and not have people able to just walk through your house. And that's important because otherwise they would, right? So, uh, so often North Americans are like, I can't believe there's all that security, but a Nicaraguan going to North America would say the same thing. Why do you have to lock your doors? What, what are you afraid of? And they'd be like, but you have walls. We're like, yeah, because the doors are open, right? We're outside. We got to secure the perimeter to some degree. You can't make it that people just wander through. So everything in the house is designed around cooling. Now, my office, which is right here, uh, you'll notice that I actually have the door closed. That's because of all my cameras and computers, the dust in the air does pose a problem, and sometimes it gets too warm. So I air condition that space most of the time. Now, while we're going through all this, uh, my house is quite large, even for Nicaragua. So uh, this is this is a big space, and we're only going to show a small piece of it. Uh, but we do want to talk about the air conditioning cost, because that's what prompted this, was people saying that the air conditioning must be so expensive. If you did all these things, you could save money. So just as an example, I moved from Dallas, Texas, where... It does get much warmer than Nicaragua. As much as people want to complain about the heat in Nicaragua, Dallas is often much hotter. Now in the winter, it's much colder, but we have to air condition the house much more strongly. Our all time record for the highest bill for electric we ever had in Dallas was about $850. During the summer, our normal is about 400 and our lowest was normally about 250. Here in this last month, now this is not the hot season, right? So you can see the sky here is, is darker. We got some clouds and stuff. It's really pleasant outside right now, like absolutely perfect. So, so we're definitely having cooler days from time to time. This is not the hottest part of the year, but the, the variance, if you check a, a climatic chart for Leon, we're always hot. There's no cool season. There's just not quite as hot season. Uh, but this is the time of year where we use a little bit of electricity. But oh, we just got our electric bill for last month and we were... $41. We have seven air conditioners in the house. I believe I counted that correctly. And uh, we don't use all of them all the time. We're going to show a little bit about how that works. Uh, but $41, where people claim it's so hot, you can't live without air conditioning. This is our real home. We have three adults that live here full time, two kids that live here full time, two dogs that live here full time, a cat here full time. That may sound crazy, but the dogs and the cat use as much air conditioning as anyone else. Uh, and then we almost always have visitors here. So figure another one to two people for at least 10 to 15 days of the month. And if they're here, they're definitely using air conditioning the whole time. So all that comes together to explain we're using a lot of air conditioning, even though we're frugal about it. And we're, you know, we're, we're definitely putting in an effort to not waste energy. We're talking about spending $41, and the highest I've seen during the, the hot season is about $85. So it's clear we're using a lot more air conditioning or power one way or another during the hot season. Of course, during the hot season, our, our refrigerators work harder as well. We're going to run fans more often. A lot of things use power that would not just be the air conditioners. So it's normal under hotter conditions to just use more power, even if you don't have air conditioning. But so that's important to understand because the person who was bringing it up was saying we could save so much money. And I really want to question how much money they think we're going to save because they're very adamant about it. This, there was this very clear Americans know better how to do air conditioning and, and Nicaraguans don't and, and you should, you, you'll save so much money and, and take a load off the grid. But people have noted that our per kilowatt costs are higher here supposedly than in basically anywhere in the United States, definitely higher than the average. Yet we're paying 41 for a hotter place than Dallas, which is supposed to be nice and, and a very, very pleasant place to live. And we were there we were spending, instead of between 40 and 80, 250 to 850. So those are really important perspectives. Even if we shut off all the air conditioning, how much below $41 do you think we're going to get? We still have three fridges that are always there. We have, uh, my kids have video games that are going all the time. They've always got a couple laptops going. My office is always running. I'm always charging cameras, always charging phones, always running my desktop, often have a laptop, doing so much video rendering and stuff, always uploading, lots of networking. We have a NAS that's always on. We have a, a secondary computer. I always have two desktops on, always in my, in my office. There's never a day without two running. When we're playing video games, we got a video game machine that runs. We have a couple different TVs in the house. They don't get a lot of use. So that we have several doesn't mean that we have several running at once. At most, we have one or two on an evening running. Most evenings, none. So, you know, perspective. But we have a lot of devices running a lot of the time. And our electric varies between 41 and 85 that I have seen here. So realistically, with all those things that aren't air conditioning running, the amount that air conditioning is contributing to that $41 is at most maybe $10. And so, yeah, we could put in thousands of dollars changing the house and sealing all kinds of things. 
to save $10? Does that make sense? And would it save? Let's go find out. So let's head into the house and show you a little bit of how this works. Remember, everything about the design of a traditional Nicaraguan house. In this case, this is a colonial recreation. It's not a colonial house. It's a little bit of a colonial inspired house. So I'm going to explain how colonials are different once we walk through. Uh, but it's all about keeping things cool using natural air. All right, we're going to start with a little view of the garden. Now, this room actually has screens. I have no idea why because the other rooms do not. So I want to show this is what we call the gymnasium. It's kind of like a guest bedroom. So we have air conditioning, but it's currently off. We have the windows open. Uh, the, the dogs like to sleep in here. Sometimes we don't even air condition this room, but it's very small and these are all concrete walls. So it's very easy if you turn on the air conditioning, it has a lot of power compared to the size of the room. So it's able to cool the room down in about 15 minutes. So you don't need to run this all day. So, oh, and the dogs are like, yep, this is where we go. This is our space. See, they're both in here with me. They know if we're in here that this is their, this is their nap room. Let's come out. We always have, like I said, we always have doors open. Now this is the salon. Now this is what we really got to see. Well, actually I'm going to show. Look at all these windows and doors wide open. There's so much air coming through the house. Everything's open everywhere, including the roof. Now this is where a traditional colonial would be wide open. There'd be nothing here. And then this space down here would be like a garden or a swimming pool or something that would be expected to take rain directly into it. But here we have an extra roof above, but that is open space there. So Air goes across the top and sucks air up the same way the old fashioned churches use uh, the, the roofs to stay cool. So as wind goes across the top of the house, it pulls the hot air up and it keeps airflow and it sucks air in through all the windows and doors. So we have, so we have windows there, windows there, windows there, door there, windows there. Even the, the bathroom windows are wide open. Now this room this is our video game room right over here. And that's a bit of a mess. Ignore that. This is just where the kids hang out. we got our video game computers and TVs. This one will air condition if we're going to use it. But we just leave it open most days. It only gets air conditioned maybe one to two days of the week. Now, this is my office here. I keep it all closed up because that I air condition. But everything else under normal conditions is wide open. Only the bed bedrooms are being cooled most days. So, like, the kids are using their bedrooms right now. So, they're generally going to be air conditioning it. Just getting a beautiful shot of the sky here before we switch back to me. All right, so that was our walk around. I hope that gives you an idea of what the house is like. That's the important parts. All right, so we got individual bedrooms, and they have air conditioners, just like the gymnasium that I showed you with a dedicated air conditioner, windows that you could open but might not. And then, you know, some days, if it's nice, at night when I go to bed, I'll just open the windows. And maybe I'll put on a ceiling fan. Sometimes I don't. A lot of times we use the air conditioner. It just depends on how we're feeling, what it's like outside, is there wind, any number of factors. But we only air condition rooms that we need to and only when they're being used. And this is very different than the traditional North American style of sealing up the entire house and then cooling everything. If you don't go outside like you do here in Nicaragua, obviously Americans go outside, but they don't go outside every few minutes like we do here. Here, you're likely to go outside anytime you step out of your bedroom. You might step outside to just catch a little bit of breeze. Sometimes you come out to see people because that's where people sit. Often we go over to the hammocks or into one of those chairs, that furniture I showed you outside. That's where people are going to sit. Often my wife will go outside in and read if I'm going to eat. Sometimes I sit out there. Sometimes I'm filming outside all the time. So people are constantly going in and out. And of course, the dogs are in and out all day long. We leave everything open. They just run around in all the different yards and gardens. So if we were to do that using the American style, the, the air conditioner wouldn't work at all. Obviously, you don't do that in America. You come up with other things. You're enclosed inside the house and you do everything inside the house. You don't go in and out like that. It would be completely impractical. Here you do. It's just part of the lifestyle. And if you move here, you're likely to experience this. Of course, you won't necessarily change your lifestyle, but most people we know, once they're here, find that just the nature of the climate, the way the houses are built, the way the people interact, the things you're expected to do, the things you want to do change, and you're likely going to do this. It's just the lifestyle here. So expect that, but it explains why houses are that way. Even if you're not going to do that, it's how the house was built because other people are expected to do that. My dog is barking in the background because the lizards have been running around on the roof. The storms are kind of coming, so the lizards get a little bit agitated and run around on the roof. So because it's designed to be outside all the time. We treat the individual rooms as little houses and we seal them up and we air condition tiny rooms. So my office, which is very small and is made of concrete for the most part is super insulated. Now, yes, it is true. We could improve with much more expensive windows and seal up the doors and make it even better. And I've done some of that by putting uh, extra curtains over the windows to reduce airflow and to 
put in some insulation and you don't want to do too much you want to still have light but you could get like super high efficiency windows and that would improve things but only so much you'll probably never be able to cover the cost of the window from the cost savings because we pay so little for power and of course a lot of people are putting in solar these days here in Nicaragua it's very very popular so if you do that then your power costs go down even further and then saving that power is essentially meaningless you're generating it anyway use it or lose it so you know, why would you not run the air conditioner a little bit harder why would you pay a whole bunch to insulate the house if it doesn't change your electric bill at all and it isn't using any natural resources you wouldn't so you just do that so that there's all these things that encourage people not to invest in that way because it there's very little reward and a lot of potential cost, and the majority of problems are already solved. So right now, we only air condition the rooms that we're using currently. So my daughters are in their rooms. They have them air conditioned, presumably. Although it's cool enough, they may not even be doing that. If they want, they can open up their windows and get fresh air to cool them. That works too. But there's so little power used to air condition such a small space between it being a tiny space, well insulated because everything's made out of concrete, and the air conditioners are split ductless units that are incredibly efficient. So they're able to cool down that space super fast and using very little power. It's just a much more efficient system than we're used to in North America. The big units that cool your whole house with, with duct work, that's not very efficient. It's better than like window units but only barely. It's just not great. And some window units are going to perform like ductless. So in, there are cases where those are better. The central air systems just aren't very good at being efficient. They're handy. And if you're going to cool an entire house, they keep everything even. That's why we tend to use them in North America. But here we don't worry about that. Mostly it's not the culture to do that. Can you? Yes. If that's what matters to you, of course you can do that if you're building your own house. But if we were to modify this house, as I just showed you, not only would we have to keep the doors closed, the windows closed, not let the dogs go outside. We'd have to cool so much more. All the space I showed you, none of that's being cooled. So we don't need to cool it. Why would we need to air condition that? It doesn't make any sense. All of that space, we'd have to have air conditioning cooling that. But I showed you the ceiling. We'd have to get that closed up. That would completely take away the biggest cooling system in the house, that air pressure system where the wind comes across, creates low pressure, and sucks the hot air out of the house. That wouldn't be there. So the hot air would get stuck inside the house, and the house would need to have more air conditioning to cool that because it's not being pulled away. So we give up this huge amount of efficiency to create efficiency. Doesn't make much sense. It's just a whole bunch of you got to consider what's, what it's really like and take into consideration how you're really going to use it to some degree, make some adjustments. So in a lot of ways, it's learning to work with the Nicaraguan systems, but also to learning to live within Nicaraguan culture. And then if you need to do special things for yourself, adjusting as makes sense. But overall, this works really well. We find that we use extremely little power. We're able to be in air conditioning. Honestly, at the amount we're paying for electric, we don't question using air conditioning. Anytime we want air conditioning on, we just turn it on. And, uh, you know, I keep my office around 78 degrees, but my wife likes to sleep at like 67 degrees. And that's what our power bill is like with her running the air conditioning that hard. And she doesn't even have one of those split ductless uh, ones that she uses most of the time. We have, that's the one old air conditioner that we have in the house. It's a really old window unit. That seems to be running pretty well. So we just keep using it and it's still that efficient. So uh, when you're looking at moving to Nicaragua, of course, everywhere has different power. Every house has different cooling. Everybody uses it differently. But our real world usage over and over shows that the Nicaraguan system is very efficient. We have mostly accommodated a Nicaraguan lifestyle. Of course, Nicaraguans mostly don't use air conditioning at all. We take a hybrid approach. We have isolated spots that we keep air conditioned but most everything we don't keep air conditioned and it works great. You adapt faster and the cost is low, but with seven air conditioners and all those rooms, because we have loads of bedrooms, plus we, we air condition the gym, the media room, my office. Uh, we don't air condition the rooms that we have extra bedrooms out in the back guest rooms uh, that are a separate building. But we could, we could very easily. And of course, one of the things about an American style house is if you add another bedroom, well, one way or another, you have to cool that. Sure, you could close the door, close the, the vents, but it's not very well insulated from the rest of the house. It increases the airspace. And if anyone goes in and out, does anything, it just uses some of that cold air. But here we have extra uh, rooms. They're outside or they're, they're completely disconnected. You don't have to run the air conditioner in that room. So even if you're moving from room to room throughout the day, you just turn off the air conditioner in the room you came from, turn it on in the one you're going to, and it doesn't use any extra power, even though you have extra rooms. 
have some food arriving here from Perdido's Jaw. So my goal today in this is really to just give you an idea of what a traditional Nicaraguan house is going to be like. And of course, there's lots of different styles. You're going to encounter a, little, a lot of different things. But the general rule is that houses are designed to be cooled by natural air. If you're going to air condition things, they are designed to be segmented. And things have a tendency to be designed around extreme high efficiency because Nicaraguans have lower income on average than a lot of other regions. And they want to be careful about wasting electricity that cost them money. So if there was a way to make things actually less costly, they're generally going to have found it because they are looking at it. There's millions of Nicaraguans who are looking at this every day and everyone wants to save money and it's worth putting an effort to save money. So looking at it from the outside, it's unlikely that you're going to look at it for a few minutes and just magically know, well, you know, if you did this, you're going to do something better than millions of people over hundreds of years have come up with as a way to cool houses. This, this sure AI is going to divide, design some really cool ways to have natural air cool houses even better than humans have found over the millennium. That is expected, right? It's going to do engineering studies that we couldn't do in real life at scales we never thought about and all kinds of things. There's going to be amazing things happening to lower the cost of power and such. Of course, AI is going to use the uh, way more energy than that to come up with those ideas. So there's other problems to tackle with that. But those kinds of things will happen. But when you're looking at Nicaragua, like think about one, these are expectations. This is what the houses are likely going to be like uh, if you're coming here, right? They're going to be air-cooled, segmented, ductless air conditioning. If there's any, if you're going to put things in, that's what you're going to be putting in. It's like this for a reason and it makes sense and it works. It's not perfect and not everyone wants it. And I know people who've put in central air. You can do that if you want. You have the flexibility if you're putting in your own place. But if you're looking for a Nicaraguan place, you're going to, the, everything is going to be fairly standard. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.